Welcome back to another episode of DM Academy. Today we're going to talk about part placement inside your build envelope. This might not seem important to you, but it is actually quite crucial to get good results out of your printer. Alright, so there are six basic rules uh, you should follow when you place your part inside the build envelope and we printed some parts uh, on our FDM printer to just make it easier to show you how this exactly works. So let's start with the first rule. Uh, let's look at these cubes. Um, and these are some very famous parts in the uh, AM industry. Uh, they're basically printed for uh, material characterization. But a lot of times you have parts that are cubic shaped. And um, if uh, you place your cubes inside your build envelope, usually you would say, okay, let's place them like this, you know, align them to your build envelope. But actually what you should do is you turn them just a slight bit by maybe 20 degrees. Uh, and this is important because when your coater spreads the next layer of powder, it is uh, going to hit each of these parts in different uh, location. If you have them all turned like this, your coater will hit a large front of parts. So to avoid this, turn them in a little bit and then you only have a point of impact on each of these parts and this will release stress of the of the coach plate and of course these are small cubes with small cubes you can place them like this but the larger the parts are the more critical the coacher impact gets on your part and if you don't follow this rule it could happen that if your part protrudes a little bit and the coacher hits the part then the machine will just stop because the coacher gets stuck so try to avoid placing parts like this all right, so the second rule is try to place your parts in parallel to the coacher. So what does this mean? Um, let's say the coacher is coming in in this direction and uh, let's say these discs are the parts that we want to print. And I could print them like this in the row and uh, this would probably work, but um, to avoid that you lose a lot of powder or that you have to use a lot of powder, it's better to place them more like this or like this is even better. Um, and why is this, why is this the case? Um, it's really simple. Whenever you spread powder, you have a defined amount of powder in front of your recoater blade. And this is typically uh, more or less a homogeneous distribution over the whole uh, coater uh, length. And if you place the parts like this, um, you will need a lot of powder just in the middle section. So your oversupply factor has to be a whole lot and you are wasting powder in these uh, two parts of your build plate. So let's say you need more than like 400% to print these parts like this, then all the powder that is on the sides of these parts will be wasted and will just be in your overflow bin. So if you place them like this, then you don't need as much powder to recoat and um, this basically saves you powder and saves you time for sieving afterwards and uh, all the post-processing. All right, so this third rule is, if you have a large flat part, try to place it at a slight angle in your build envelope. So the, this is a uh, cap from, from our camera guy and it actually shows pretty nicely um, how you should place your part because it's fairly flat and it has a lot of detailed features so it's not just a sheet metal part. Um, if you place it like this, you, you can do that, but the larger the part is, the more stress you will get in your part if it's a large flat part. So it tends to warp because you have a lot of force that is pulling the part together. So what you should do is place it at a slight angle, like this maybe. Um, so that way the exposed area in each layer is fairly small compared to printing it like this. This will assure that you have not a lot of stress in your part and it will also assure that you get it off the build plate more easy because, you know, let's face it, if you print it like this, you need to support all the bottom area and it's uh, really a pain to get the part off the plate. So printing it like this will help you stress-wise in the part and also removing the part is going to be easier. All right, so the fourth rule is try to place overhangs away from your coater. So what does this mean? Uh, let's say again the coater is coming from this side and spreading powder this way. Uh, then uh, let's take our Academy hook and uh, place it in our build envelope. And this is actually the ideal position because this overhang here, this is the steepest. So we want to place this overhang away from the coacher. If we were to print the part like this, then our steepest overhang would show towards the coacher. And why is this important? 
Overhangs that show towards the coater are more likely to pull up, so they come out of the powder and the coater is more likely to hit these corners, of course. So if we turn it around, place it like this, it's less likely that your part will come up and uh, stick out of the powder and it's more likely that your print will not fail. Alright, so the fifth rule today is try to reduce support. Now this is not a rule per se, it's just to make your life easier because the more support you have, the harder it is to take the part of the build plate. Uh, let's say we want to print this pen and we could print it like this, you know, just place it flat on the build plate and that way we would have a fairly short print time, but then we would have to support all this area under here. A better way is to print it like this and uh, that way you only have a few supports under here and you can easily break the part of the build plate. Now, of course, when you have a part like this, your print time will be much longer if you print it like in this position. However, usually you have a lot of parts so you can combine a lot of those pens and print like 50 of them on the same build plate and that way also you will be faster per part. So the last rule today is rule number six, consider heat management in your parts. So what does this mean? When you print a part, you put a lot of heat with the laser into your brittle job. And for example, if you print a cone like this and you print it upside down, this will reduce a lot of supports, of, obviously, because you only have one point that is touching the build plate. However, because the layers get wider and wider once you move up to the top of the part, you get a lot of heat stuck in your part and it cannot flow out of the part. So what you should do in this case is actually print the part like this, even though you have more support underneath. So when you place your part, try to kind of juggle between how much support do I need or do I want to remove and how do I get the heat out of this part. Um, this is actually a fairly complicated topic, so we will show you more detailed how this works in a later episode. So what did we learn today? Today I showed you the six basic rules of how to place your parts inside your build envelope. First rule was try to avoid placing long uh, edges alongside the coater. Second was try to place your parts in parallel to the coater. Third rule is to place large flat parts at a slight angle in your build envelope. Fourth rule is try placing overhangs pointing away from your coater. Fifth rule is try to reduce support. And the sixth rule is consider heat management in your part. So these were the six essential rules of part placement in your build envelope. And Next time we will talk about the importance of shielding gas for your build job. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.